In this video, I'm going to tell you how greenhouse effect gases will change in the future decade. And I'm going to tell you about their impact on the climate and how greenhouse effect gases and climate are combined. On the first slide, you see why we can continue looking at greenhouse effect gases. We have the emissions of the three main gases for the next few decades. Carbon dioxide on the left-hand side, which may uh, go from a few dozens of billion tons of carbon to much greater figures. And in the center, we have the evolutions of methane, and on the right-hand side, nitrous oxide emissions. Now, these scenarios are built on socioeconomic assumptions, demography, technological progress, and also mitigation policies introduced to reduce these gases. And these scenarios will help us force the models in order to predict the climate evolution. This is what you can see now on the second slide. Greenhouse effect gases, CO2 particularly on the left, and on the right hand side, the way the climatic system reacts, shown with the global temperature. This slide shows you that for a high scenario of gas evolutions, we have a uh, an increase, a high increase in temperatures, whereas there's a scenario where the temperature would not increase so much, no more than two degrees versus the pre-industrial era. The greenhouse effect increase explains the order in which things happen. First, concentrations increase and then the climate changes increase. Now, I would like to demonstrate that the uh, greenhouse effect gas uh, system and the climate uh, systems are combined. The climate may influence directly the evolution of uh, greenhouse effect gases concentrations. If the climate amplifies uh, the impact of uh, gases, there is a positive uh, reaction. The more gases are em emitted, the greater the concentration and the uh, greater the climate changes. Otherwise, we could have a negative uh, retroactive uh, loop. I'm going to describe the positive retroactive loop looking at the carbon cycle and the climate system. Natural sinks, such as the ocean or the uh, land biosphere, absorb 50% of anthropic CO2 emissions. The climate, therefore, reacts to CO2 concentration caused by uh, these uh, anthropic emissions. However, the climate may change the way in which sinks absorb CO2, i.e. the efficacy of CO2 sinks. This is what happens in the ocean, very simple process. The ocean is, uh, the ocean temperature is rising and their solubility is decreased and the ocean can absorb less carbon, CO2. For the biosphere, similar processes may explain why climate changes reduce the efficacy of the sink. France says the fact that uh, increased temperatures will encourage remineralization of uh, CO2 in the, uh, in the ground, or the fact that the climate changes may lead in some area, areas to uh, rain stress, a decreased rain, uh, raining, and therefore a decreased production by uh, continental land. Now, by coupling climatic systems and carbon cycles, scientists looked at positive retroactive loops and the way they could induce an additional warming by the end of this century. You can understand this by looking at the slide. The black curves are an increased temperature, increasing temperature, a simulation in which there is no retroaction between climate and carbon cycle. In red, we have temperature increase with a positive retroactive uh, loop. And with a positive retroactive loop, we see that the temperature by the end of the century could uh, be 1.5 degree greater than if there had been no retroactive positive uh, loop. Do we have any indication in the past climates uh, over the last few decades telling us that climate and carbon cycle or climate and CO2 are coupled? The first uh, indication comes from the uh, glacial, interglacial cycles over about a million years, 500 million years until today, temperatures have uh, evolved in phase with high CO2 atmospheric concentration during the interglacial periods. 
peaks and low CO2 uh, values that in the nadirs. If the CO2 concentration may explain the transition between glacial periods and interglacial periods, the uh, climate variations in between do provide an additional indication. Climate variations, therefore, directly influence the uh, carbon cycle and the climate cycle. Now, this is a conventional example of coupling between climate and CO2. The glacial and interglacial periods are not the best way to explain what could happen in the next few decades. Time scales are quite different and the processes involved are also quite different. In the case of glacial interglacial variations, the deep ocean over a large time scale is responsible for storage or elimination of scarbon. Another time, another time scale which might prove more interesting for the next term, years or decades would be CO2 variations over a scale from one year to a, the next interannual. Two curves here with uh, steps showing uh, the evolution following anthropic actions, and in gray, dark gray, evolutions of the CO2 uh, atmospheric concentration increase. There is no direct relationship between the two curves. The growth rate is lower or higher from one year to the next, not because uh, anthropic emissions are greater, but because the climate varies naturally from one year to the next. Scientists have been able to establish a relationship between high growth rates in some years with the existence of natural climatic uh, phenomena such as uh, the El Nino event. During the El Nino event, CO2 concentrations increased faster in the atmosphere because in some areas of the globe, climate changes were such that, that drought rained in areas like Indonesia and uh, carbon was released by the vegetation. On this type of time scale, there's a relationship between CO2 and climate. And climate, natural climate variations will influence the way the CO2 will be released into the atmosphere. I have described a uh, retroactive loop between climate and carbon cycle and especially climate and CO2, but other greenhouse effect gases uh, can have a uh, retroactive loop. Methane, for instance, the concentration depends on the way human activities relieve methane, but there are other important reservoirs in the natural system that could influence climatic changes. For instance, uh, methane hydrates found in oceanic uh, sediments uh, at very high depth, or uh, a difference in pressure or temperature in the water could change the way methane is released and uh, released uh, climbs to the surface and into the atmosphere. Another important reservoir is the permafrost reservoir. Uh, changes in the temperature and uh, thawing of uh, frozen ground in Siberia could uh, lead to more methane being released and a positive retroactive loop between the climate and methane uh, components. So a few examples, CO2 and methane, show us that uh, geochemical cycles and the carbon cycle and the methane cycle can be combined. And in order to make projections, we need to be fully aware of the processes interacting between the climate and the emissions. Thank you.